Welcome to Conversations with Karalia, where we take a nuanced deep dive into all things related to spirituality, sexuality, power, and awakening. My name is Karalia, and I'm your host for this journey. I invite you to relax back, open up, and get curious. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and share the love. Alrighty, welcome, welcome, welcome to yet another episode of Conversations with Paralia. This one's going to be a doozy, quite an interesting one. Um, I'm recording this in May 2023. And my business has experienced a dramatic downturn in revenue in the last six months. Like we're talking 65, 70% downturn. And I've been noticing on the socials, other women in particular, um, in the same kind of like spiritual based, personal development based businesses, also experiencing the same thing, you know, which is not a surprise because we're in a recession and all of that, yada, yada, yada. Anyway. I got chatting to Laura Allen, who's my guest on the show this week, and she was quite happy to talk about the ins and outs of business and money, how it relates to our childhood trauma, in particular to sexual trauma, because sexuality, power, and money, our relationship to money, are intimately interwoven. And I was like, hell yeah, let's talk about all the things. Um, one thing I've noticed in our society is that there can often be a lot of shame around how much we're earning or not earning how well our business is doing or not doing. Uh, people don't really talk honestly about their finances. It's like it's it's shameful. It's, what, it's like it's shameful. It's like you're meant to keep it hidden. You're meant to keep it private. But I don't know if that serves us as a collective, particularly when we're coming from a hard open space. So Lauren and Ellen and I are going to dive into all these things. So a few more things about Laura Ellen. So funny, I don't even know her last name. I just know as Laura Allen. She doesn't even have her last name on her website either. So we're just going to call her Laura Allen. Um, so she is a playful tantric explorer. Uh, she's a passionate performer and a hardcore psychology nerd at heart. And this is where Laura and Allen and I often, we talk about psychology stuff. She actually came and did my direct realization tantra training. Um, we've been friends for a few years. So there's a lot of crossover between our businesses and how we see the, the world. She's done a lot more study than I have, though. Well, study in a different area. She had studied integrative nutrition, nonviolent communication, neuro-linguistic programming, somatic experiencing, classical and neo-tantra, qualified Vita sex love. She is a qualified Vita sex love and relationship coach and currently embarking on attaining an MA in psychology. So she is a coach, specifically in the relationship area. She knows a lot about sex, orgasm, and energy. Um, and that knowledge has completely changed the way that she lives, relates, and loves. So we're going to talk about all the things. Um, I'm really curious to, to see where this particular podcast goes and as always, stick around to the end when I'll reflect on the conversation and what might have come up. And uh, yeah, let's dive in, shall we? Laura Allen, welcome to Conversations with Karalia. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Oh, okay, <sighs> where are you in the world right now? I am in Wanaka in uh -huh. the South Island of New Zealand. Awesome. And you're in business, right? Can you describe your business for those who might not know of you and your magic? Yeah, thank you for the opportunity to share. So I'm essentially a somatic therapist. My one-on-one -on -one practice, I work with women and some men and some couples from all different walks of life. And um, we basically work on... Um, how to feel more alive and radiant, bringing aliveness, radiance and pleasure back to the body, back to relationships and back to the relationship with life. Um, I'm also a sex educator. I have a podcast called The Better Loving Podcast that's been going for quite a few years now. Um, and I run more, more than a hundred, more than a hundred episodes, right? 
Yeah, there's like 123 episodes on there. I yeah. actually just found out today. 123 episodes. Yeah, it's like a whole thing, guys. So if you're listening to this, go check it out. It's, it's yeah. fun. Um, and I run programs as well. So Essential Sex is my uh, signature program that I lead women through. And again, it's all about bringing embodiment um, into your sexual experience and being able to really experience sensations on the most sensual and divine levels so yeah juicy so needed (laughs) in this world um yeah I'm just realizing so I had Kim Sama on a couple of episodes ago and she of course is a somatic therapist as well working in a similar field and just such needed potent work um I'm curious about your entrepreneurial journey is this the only business you've ever run when did you get into business like did you want to be an entrepreneur yeah, uh, I. this isn't my first business. This is my third business. Um, so I never really knew about entrepreneurship, but what happened was is I was living in Europe and I had just finished my fashion uh, qualification, which is amazing. But to be honest, I was never like that good. I didn't really have the X factor in the fashion industry. Um, and so I found myself without work and I was trying and trying to find a job. I was working in hospitality, starting to get a little bit frustrated and my whole community were entrepreneurs and they were really encouraging and supportive of me to just start something of my own. And so purely from being in that environment and having such a supportive and encouraging group of friends, I launched my first business, which was called Runaway Spoon. That was a like boutique Epicurean food tours company in Amsterdam. And I would take people around on bikes to um, craft beer breweries and uh, speakeasy cocktail bars. I'd take them through the markets and it was really marketed at a sort of Condé Nast traveler because the places that we went were not on the tourist maps and they were really, really good quality. Uh, So that was my first experience with business and just that just that process of registering the business and setting up tax creating a website doing a logo putting myself out there marketing myself creating a product delivering it getting paid for my service you know like all of that that whole experience was the first time I did it and like to be honest it was a total flop like it didn't go anywhere and um I just, I think I was really young and very insecure. So it was hard for me to really get it off the ground at that time. Um, But it was perfect because it's not what it was for. It was that first entry into the entrepreneur landscape that gave me tools and confidence and the ability to earn money on my own terms in my own way and not need to rely on a quote unquote job. Mm. Um. Yeah, after that, I went into photography and I ended up being a freelance photographer. I created a agency, which is a lot of what a lot of photographers do, <laughs> but your agency is like one person and maybe you like subcontract to other photographers, but it went really, really well. I had a business partner and we uh, traveled all around Europe, all around the States. It was an amazing, very exciting time in my life. I was this traveling photographer and I worked in corporate, right? So it was Monday to Friday, nine to five with people who know how to pay their invoices and you're not dealing with crazy brides, you know? So I really enjoyed it. I got to uh, go to conferences and be exposed to industries and worlds that really opened my eyes. Um, And I ended up working a lot in the tech space and the startup scene and doing a lot of shoots and conferences for people in that industry, uh, which again, just gave me this professionalism and edge that I really appreciated and got a lot from. Mm. Um, And then moving back to New Zealand, it took me a little while to figure out, you know, it just took me a while to land and decide what I wanted to do. I was training a lot. I was going through my own like sexual sexual exploration. I was, um, I'd done my uh, IIN nutrition course back in Amsterdam and I was just kind of gathering all of the tools. And then I woke up one day and I was like, this is it and started yeah Mm. just started doing it hey I want to backtrack a little bit I'm really curious about why you stopped doing the freelance traveling photographer thing because this sounds amazing yeah it does sound amazing and it was super fun um but you get over it I got over it I got over it's such a glamorous lifestyle but 
Um, you're kind of just in hotels all the time. It's pretty lonely. You spend a lot of time on dating apps. I mean, I was out and about, I was in my twenties. <laughs> so, you know, like it was very easy for me to find friends, but my needs and desires changed. You know, I didn't want to mm. be in bars anymore. I wanted to be at home at my friend's birthday party instead of missing it because I'm shooting a conference in Milan, you know, like it's, mm. I just, my priorities of life changed and I wanted mm -hmm. to be more grounded. Mm, okay. So how long ago did you come back to New Zealand and launch the current business, the somatic therapy business? So I came back to New Zealand around six years ago. Um, and hmm, I've been in business in this business now for about four and a half years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm curious, like as most people might, might be aware, we've had a very interesting um, economic right in the last three years. First, it was COVID. And I don't know if you're running in-person events, how that impacted you. And then, of course, interest rates started going up, inflation started going up, and it feels like there's this general living cost increase. And of course, I know in my business, I'm discretionary spending for a lot of people. And I'm guessing somatic therapy, working on your sex life, et cetera, for a lot of people probably is discretionary spending. So how's the arc been over the four and a half years, particularly the last three? Yeah, uh, I mean, like anything, <laughs> my industry and the industry that I work in is, is highly, highly privileged. And that's always been a, a piece for me. I've always wanted to find ways to make my work more accessible. Hence why I've started going down the um, academic pathway route now. Um, before I finish answering this question, I feel like I just want to mention to all the listeners, there are crazy roadworks happening outside my apartment right now. So I've mm -hmm. done my best to soundproof as much as I can, but you'll just have to excuse the noise of this like digger, like digging can't hear the road it. right at, you can't hear it? Okay. Can't hear it. Yeah. My, my whole building is like vibrating as this like roller thing oh. like goes right past my window. Anyway. Okay. Great. Can't hear it. Amazing. So the economic arc over the times. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I was running in-person uh, events, but it wasn't the majority of my business. I was already operating online. So what COVID did, those initial lockdowns for me on a operational level was it really just pushed me into being 100% online, which was actually quite exciting for me because you get more reach, you can actually make more money. Um <clears throat> and I find for me personally, because I'm so tech savvy and I really appreciate the tech space, I've, I'm super immersed in, in the tech world, you know, uh, social media, Instagram, online courses, all of that stuff is very natural to me and I love it. I think it can be really powerful if you know how to work with it properly. So I thrived. I really thrived. And actually like COVID surprisingly for my business was great. People kind of we're just getting handed out money myself personally from the government, but then also people just were working from home and they had all the space and time and all of this capacity to invest in things that they potentially wouldn't have if they were going to the office five days a week and in their busy lifestyles. So even with interest rates rising and things like that over these last couple of years, the business has been steadily growing. But I would say a lot, like over these last eight months, eight to yeah. nine months, things have definitely, definitely dipped off as the sort of financial climate really starts to intensify. And, um, you know, like a lot of, a lot of, I've actually had three of my clients drop out from my practice because the interest rates on their mortgages have risen and it's just like no longer financially feasible yeah. for them to stay with me. And of course, like that's absolutely okay, I don't want them to be stressed. That's like the opposite of what we're trying to do. Um, <laughs> so, you know, it's like, peace out. Um, but yeah, that does, it does have consequences on me. And I have seen my revenue drop significantly over the last eight yeah. months to the point where it's, you know, it's definitely changing the trajectory of my business and my life. But I will say this is like, regardless of the external climate the external financial climate my relationship with my business either that's the way that I've set it up you know the sort of product suite and the customer journey that I've set up maybe there's flaws in how I've done it probably is I know there is 
Um, and then also my own energetic relationship to finance and money over these last, you know, well, my whole life actually has meant that my income has always been highly volatile and never really consistent. I'm never in a space where I can fully lean back and trust that the business will hold me because sometimes it does really fucking well. And then other times it really doesn't. And so it puts me in this constant relationship of acquisition, stress, and just never being able to fully trust and relax that it's going to be there for me, um, which I think is the most interesting piece, mm. um, considering that that's a pattern that's played out in my life in money and relationships. So, mm-hmm. haha. Ah, so yeah, this is this is the stuff I definitely want to dial into. It's like how do how do we pass out what is an energetic pattern arising from our own conditioning? What is the nature of entrepreneurship itself and what is being impacted by external circumstances, if you see what I mean? Because is the entrepreneurial journey always going to be volatile and up and down, et cetera? Uh, Or is there a place where it's possible to be in the entrepreneurial journey and be able to just relax back and have all the systems and everything set up so the money just flows with ease, you see? Right. Yeah, I feel like the money flowing with ease thing is like great and manifestation and abundance circles and stuff like that. But it's never going to happen for like if we're just if we're kind of every entrepreneur, no matter what level you're at, whether you're a billionaire or running a multi million dollar company, there's always going to be influx and then contraction. And there's always going to be risk. There's always going to be, you know, flying on the seat of your pants. That is kind of the uh, thrill and you know, risk reward mm. nature of entrepreneurship. Um, I find that, you know, us as coaches and in the transmission based leadership space, we can take things very personally, make a lot of it mean stuff about ourselves and we can really recognize and see, you know, the energetics behind the money that is playing out and how that is similar to patterns that we have in our lives, just like what I'm doing here. And also it's nice to give ourselves a bit of a break, right? You know, like now, for example, what's happening for a lot of coaches. I know you're experiencing it. I'm experiencing it. Most coaches and healers and health workers are experiencing a huge dip in their revenue yeah. right now. Um, and the trick is like to take, to take stock, to take inventory, to run the inquiry around what we're doing and how we can change, but also like not to make it mean anything about ourselves too much because we tend to do that. Yeah. You know, we tend to be like, what is it about me? Yeah. It's all about me. Like, <laughs> what is the fucking trauma you know like (laughs) that's what I mean right there's a sense of like yeah sure maybe I've got money blocks maybe it's just the financial environment maybe it's the nature of the entrepreneurial journey um you know like something I really worked hard at doing in the last few years was getting enough money in the bank so that I could ride the wave so I had at least three three months or so there so if things tanked it's like okay it's cool I got the money to to do that it's the nature of the game um and I've had to use it in the last six months and what I noticed was on the nervous system level I felt a certain level of relaxation it's like oh it's okay I have that money in the bank to support the business if if I need to do it it's okay I've got that money in the bank to support the business you know anytime I started getting stressed I was like I've got the money in the bank to support the business then the day came when I had to take the money from the bank and put it in the business you know and it was like oh, now how do I keep my nervous system relaxed, keep showing up, keep doing what's needed when the backstop has gone? Um, so in your business, how do you manage those the nervous system stuff, right? What happens if fear, you know, I've been dealing with a lot of fear in the last few weeks. I've got all the tools, all the practices, but it's still there, right? So I'm curious, how do you navigate that? Mm. Well, I don't know if I would, you know, recommend I, w- I would how I've been dealing with it is just how I've been needing to deal with it. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that this is a template for other people to use, mm. but um, it's been an amazing initiation for me to <laughs> lull. <Yeah>. Like <laughs> it's been an amazing <laughs> initiation for me to actually go into it because um that fear that I have around money and not having any money um is 
something that has been so deeply rooted into me since childhood because not having money when we were younger equaled severe consequences for me as a child and so you know where where my safety and my well-being was truly jeopardized you know and so um there's real there's real fear in there and that was that was around from when I was actually a baby right up until when I left home in my teens so it really is like a a early my entire youth of growing up that fear of when my environment isn't financially supporting us it's it's dangerous it's dangerous for me and so Mm. um as an adult now I think potentially I've been entertaining this entrepreneurial journey for longer or at least this business model of entrepreneur journey for a lot longer than I potentially need or should have kind of like how you stay in toxic relationships for longer than you ever want to because Mm. there's something being digested and this time I've had to really go back and feel the feelings and uncover and expose a lot of the things that I have been not wanting to feel or face. And it's been hugely uncomfortable. I mean, I've been in, I've been seeing my psychotherapist for six years now. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I've gone to all sorts of weird and wacky, like somatic, sexual, la la la, unearthing, like, you know, deep shamanic, like Iowa, you know, like all the things. Yeah. And You've done so, the work. <laughs> well, you know, we're like, I'm into the, I'm into exploring the space, you know? Yeah. Um, and it's only really been in these last eight months that I've actually really f- found myself to have the capacity as well as the external circumstances to push me, i.e. the um, money, to push me into, you're going to have to deal with this. Otherwise you're just going to keep experiencing this and the charge behind mm. it, the fact that, that the energetic charge and the hook that is in with my business. And so the outcome of me feeling all of that has meant now that when I launch a program, I've just launched a program recently and only one person signed up, you know, and in the past that would have been so crazy, intensely gutting for me because one, I would have made it mean something about myself and who I am as a practitioner, as a, as a facilitator and a person, you know, my inner dialogue would go to, I suck and then, so there's this sort of like in, internal bl- like internalization going into self-blaming. And then two, you know, I would go into total like money trauma and fear. But this time I've been able to completely maintain my sense of self, who I am as a practitioner, really recognizing, knowing and feeling truly that my value and worth and ability and capability as a practitioner remains exactly the same, regardless of who shows up in this container um and you know yeah it's just I can I feel grateful that I've been able to go through this last launch even though it's quote-unquote failed and not have that same level of intensive like yeah hook. uh-huh okay I love that I just want to kind of summarize some of what I just heard you say So one thing I heard you say is that when you were a child, when you were born to when you were a teenager, that financial difficulties equaled danger, that those two things were very real part of your growing up. So they're connected with each other. Um, And then the second thing I think that really stood out was that the external circumstances and what's happening right now has forced you to go deeper than you ever have before to deal with the stuff around that particular childhood trauma. And it's also what you're noticing is that having just run a program where one person signed up, you notice that, oh, in the past, I would have made it about me this time around. It's just what's happening. It's no big deal. Just the circumstances. I freaking love that. I love all of that. I mean, this is the work happening, right? (laughs) Real time, baby. Real time. I'll tell you what, though, it's been some heavy lifting. Like it's been completely destabilizing. It's You know, um, for for anyone listening who has, you know, seen, watched me on Instagram over these last eight months, like I have been almost at the point of like walking away, like, and I've publicly announced that I've been thinking about doing this 
you know, my life has been, you know, really challenged. And so dealing with all of this stuff has really decreased my capacity to, you know, show up in the way that I normally would and hold space for other people. And I'll tell you what else, Karalea, that this digestion has done is the desire, you know, the, the thrill of being on this entrepreneurial journey and this business model and this time the desire isn't there. Again, it's like when you're in a toxic relationship, I feel like toxic relationship is potentially a little bit too like, yeah, yeah. too icky. But a, I'm a, calm, use it a calmer anyway. resolving relationship. It's calmer a calmer resolving, resolving relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm not in an abusive relationship with my business, but you know what? I would, you know, we could actually take it there. It's like, I have put in so much work and energy and effort I've put in a lot of financial resources into this business and essentially like my job is to support other people and you know there uh, this is a business this isn't a charity I am doing this as my full-time career and you know when I have subscriptions coming out of my bank account to pay for the hosting for all of my online courses the hosting for the podcast oh, that you guys get yeah. to listen to for free you know all of these assets come out of my income you know I pay for all yeah. of these things for you guys to enjoy and it's not like <laughs> but yeah there are there are there are times when the business isn't you know giving me an energetic restraint exchange in return I start to feel resentful and it kind of is like being in a toxic relationship because who mm. wants to be with someone who you just pour your love into non-stop and they are like and then they just like bail you know or they like ditch you for a couple of months or that you know like they're never really there for you can never fully relax like that's a toxic fucking relationship and so um the more that I've dealt with my own karmic threads behind the scenes and all of this, yeah, I guess trauma from my early childhood, my desire to be in this relationship has changed. And so yeah. the the need for me to keep running into the fire and the need for me to keep living like this and being in this energetic exchange is diminishing. And so mm. that within itself is destabilizing for me because I love what I do. I feel very much in my dharma. I'm really good at it. And I'm so happy when I'm in my service, but something isn't working and it hasn't been working for a long time. It's not just these last eight months, but you know, I've, this has been on top for me for a long time. I've recognized that I've been growing out of this version of me for a while and I haven't known what I'm becoming yet. And I don't know yeah. how to tell people publicly. I don't know how to de-escalate do I want to go offline fully do I want to do stuff on the side like do I you know it's yeah. just all of this the, there's a bit of headiness around it and I don't have the answer yet it's just um but all I can say is that the dissolving of the energetic hook behind it has turned my gaze in a completely different direction and there's a strong desire for me to walk away and not from a place of I'm not earning enough money not from a place of mm. victimship anymore because if I had left six months ago I would have just been bailing because it sucks and I would have been running from it but now because I've done the work <laughs> <laughs> yeah girlfriend <laughs> the work now now if I'm to walk away it's coming from a much more empowered place it's coming from yeah. a decision that I'm making for my own well-being okay it's like this is this is the next step for me yeah oh my god just listening to you the parallels between our journeys right now are just like bam 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 because <laughs> I'm in a very similar position in that about six months ago, I started to recognize that there was karmic patterns underlying my business and how I was interacting with my community. And I was like, I got to purify, I got to clean this up in order to be able to do whatever's required now. So I'm, I actually took a sabbatical from teaching and then it was like, hang on a second, if I'm not teaching, how do, how do I bring in income? You know, like I do have different streams and things that are up online, et cetera. Um, but it's the same thing that you're talking about in terms of 
oh what if what if I don't need to be in business anymore what if this isn't the path anymore what if there's a sense of completion of the karmic patterns and in that what I'm noticing is there's a lot of grief that I can feel it right now there's a lot of grief coming up in terms of I mean I've been in business doing this for like 12 years um and then the like you say the great unknown in terms of like oh if I'm not that can I sit in the no thingness the void and allow myself because what I noticed was grasping so much grasping if I'm not that maybe I'm that maybe I'm that maybe I'm that like just desperately looking for something to hold on to um and then in the midst of all of that how how to support oneself through the transition not knowing what's going to happen if the business does continue or not continue if there's other roles or not other roles or it's like whoa we you know so Hearing you share on the same journey, I'm like, do you reckon there's something in the water right now? <laughs> I, feel like, I feel, I don't, I know that you and I are not alone. Like I know that a lot yeah. of people in this space have gone through massive identity shifts over these last, over this time. Um, yeah. So there's something collectively. Um, yeah, but also this happens and actually I saw um yeah I I totally resonate I want to acknowledge what you said first before I move on it's like I resonate so much with what you're saying and the the emotion and the grief and the sadness that comes with like that possibility of like do I walk away and what in the interim and who am I actually like who am I without this identity because I know for myself you know like I am tall blonde I have a charisma about me and I walk out into the world and like, I'm a sex therapist. I'm a sex coach. There's this like whole vibe that I carry with my business and who I am and how I operate in the world. And it's shiny. It's sparkly and it's sexy and it's magnetic. And it's like, it's all of these things. And who am I without all of that? Like who am I in my core without the money without the business without without being an entrepreneur without who am I if I'm just to have a nine to five job (laughs) Mm. you know yeah how do I feel about myself and do I still feel shiny about myself how do I shine without all of the the Mm. dazzlement around me Mm. Um, it's interesting here you say that because what I'm noticing in my journey is I'm really feeling the shine regardless of identity. And and what's coming through for me is a sense of like, oh, I could do any role and just relax into it. That's coming up. But but I guess the piece that where I'm getting a little, not stuck, but where there's grief is a sense of I'm, I'm letting people down. That's what comes up for me if I if I walk away from what I've been doing that somehow I'm letting people down or failing them or yes yeah, so it's a different it's a different hook that I'm digesting so it's really interesting for me to hear what's coming up for you and going oh yeah we've all got different aspects that we are leaning into around it well, you're so selfless and I'm so selfish. And <laughs> it's like, it's all about me. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's because interesting. Because you're just like, I'm letting people down and I'm just like, what's my identity going to be? <laughs> yeah, but I reckon in the letting people down thing, it's like some, there's something in there around approval. It's like I've been, uh, you know, something that I've been feeling into is like, shit, have I been coming f- from a caretaking? I'll take care of you if you take care of me you know like that kind of dynamic so the letting people down is it's a it's a dependency piece I think to a degree mm. or yeah it's 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 curious to feel like it fe- freaking feels like childhood trauma stuff care, caregiver relational dynamics <laughs> that old chestnut oh yeah. my god when will we be done with this <laughs> oh, oh yeah yeah and I gotta say yeah. I freaking love how you own the blonde shiny sparkly stuff I think that's just like fuck yes it's you know this epic 
I mean, yeah, I, like it's not, yeah, it's not all about appearances. Um, of course not, you know, but yeah. um, I guess in, yeah, in the feeling of walking away and, you know, I think about how am I going to introduce myself to friends at to new friends like what am I gonna say now <laughs> mm. yeah mm. Um, yeah like who am I and what am I about what's my purpose and because I feel so alive like when I'm public speaking and when I'm holding space for people and when I'm doing all of this like I feel so on and like yeah. I'm just like this is it I love yeah. like, this is I love doing this I'm so here for this yeah. Um. And so, like, yeah. I, I guess it's just like the invitation to dissolve is what I'm feeling, and is to go back to a blank canvas. Um. And I've been here before, so I feel confident that what's going to come out is really great. But I also recognize that these are times where, for me, I need to really simplify. And give myself permission and space to explore new parts of myself and to explore new dimensions of myself um, without judgment and to let go of holding on. Because right now I feel like I'm kind of flogging a dead horse with my business. It just doesn't yeah. feel like me. And I have to say, you know, with this identity of being the sex therapist and the sex educator, you know, it's um it, it's also come with a lot of shame and challenge that I've that I've had to kind of work through and I don't know if I have fully I don't know if I can stand here and fully admit that I'm completely shameless in this version of me um you know it's like it's people definitely judge me and I judge myself a lot and I have a lot of story because I'm currently single and I have a lot of story around um what man is going to want to be with me? What man is going to respect me and see me and love me if I'm being the, if this is my profession, which I, I recognize as a story and it really is my own judgments and fear that I have around like sex workers and being in the sex industry space. And part of me is like, Furious, I can feel like sensation in my body even now really sparking up as I say this because part of me is curious is am I just ashamed of fully owning this space am I just still carrying a lot of shame and unwilling to fully be myself or am I just growing out of it like am I actually just growing out of this I'm 33 you know I'm coming into like a I'm into my mother era and I don't know if I want to be so public facing with my sexuality anymore I mm. feel like there are literally two parts of me um I don't feel like I'm particularly outrageous online you know I don't have like nude photos I mean like even if I did who fucking cares I should like I can do whatever I want and it doesn't shouldn't mean anything um but there's a yeah there's just a lot of stuff that I'm feeling really tender about when it comes to working in the sexuality industry doing what I do and struggling to hold the po and always be confident and believing in myself when I know that it's quite taboo and edgy and uncomfortable for a lot of people around me mm. Mm. yeah I think it's big work because you're not dealing with personal conditioning here what you're talking about is social collective conditioning and you know if we look at what was acceptable sexually from women 20 30 40 years ago like we've come a long way baby <laughs> no like and I, I, my sense is that some things are just deep in our cells and even though you obviously do the work that 
some of that residual collective stuff can be gnarly to go in and digest. Um, and I think the piece around age and stage is, is relevant as well. Um, well, it's curious, you know, there's a curiosity there in me in terms of sexuality and, and mother. Again, that feels like social conditioning perhaps because can they, right, be both intertwined and show up in, in like appropriate ways at appropriate times. What does appropriate mean? <laughs> yeah. Um, but I love that you're exploring all of this. What I'm What I'm curious about is, as you go through this process and when your business feels like you're kind of flogging a dead horse, you've obviously got a willingness to dissolve, let things die, to do what's needed. How do you, how do you keep financially supporting yourself whilst all of that is happening, whilst you find clear direction? Mm. Yeah. So, um, well, where I'm at now is I've decided to start looking for work um, and to, yeah, get a full, like a full-time job, not a part-time yeah. job, not a contract role, like not a freelance gig. I want to be a part of a team. I want to mm. be a part of something that I care about. I want to progress my career in a new industry. I want to have options in my life. Um that aren't just, you know, marketing or I don't know, whatever else. I mean, I have many skills now, but you know, it's like, yeah. I'm, I'm just ready for something new. I'm ready for a salary. I'm ready for like my employee to like match my KiwiSaver um, payments. Oh, how I'm amazing ready. would that be? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm ready for like a company car and like a cell phone, you know, I'm ready to just, um, push some paper around the desk. I'm ready to have like lazy days and lazy weeks and still get paid. I'm ready to go on holiday and like just not have to worry about anything. I'm ready to go on holiday. I'm ready to go paid on holidays. holiday. Yeah. I just, I'm just ready to go on holiday period because yeah. I haven't actually had a holiday since I started this business. And right. Yeah, you know, it's like it's pretty clear to me that I'm actually just I'm I'm burning out. I'm burning yeah. out and I have savings that I'm no longer willing to invest in the business. I don't I don't want to the savings are for me, you know, they're for me. Yeah. They're for me and my future. And um as much as I love you all and I love, you know, gifting the podcast and stuff, it's like I don't want to continue to fund that myself personally. Um, so I think while the business isn't performing, um, yeah, I'm just, it's just, I don't want to fly on the seat of my pants anymore. And yeah. I think I'm ready for a break so that I can really digest and dissolve. Cause obviously I've got my own stuff that I'm still dealing with and all of the stuff that I just shared around, like who I want to be as a sexual woman, as a sexual mother, like at who do I how do I want to show up and how do I want my sexuality to look like? It's time for me to actually start drinking my own medicine and just really being with myself as a sexual woman and discovering who I am now. What do mm. I love now? What is actually nurturing me now? What is pleasure to me now? How do I want to engage with sexuality now? Because I've been operating how I wanted to engage with it four or five years ago, but I've changed and my life has changed and the trajectory of my life has changed. Mm. So I want the peace and quiet of a paycheck in my bank every week so that I can just do me for a while. Yeah. Mm. Oh my God. I love so much <clears throat> about that because yeah, the entrepreneurial journey, a hustle a lot of the time, so much like I'm like you, I love delivering what I deliver but that's really only maybe 10% of the time or 20% of the time is the delivery. The rest of it is the hustle and all the back end stuff that has to happen. Right. Um, oh, yeah. No holiday pay. I'm like you, the only, you know, I haven't no holidays. Um, if I'm on a holiday, what it is, I'm leading a retreat to finance being somewhere else, you know, but I'm working, I'm, I'm on 24 um, seven. No holiday pay. How amazing would that be? Um, Kiwi saver. There's all these things. 
But what I'm curious about is, you know, as an entrepreneur, there's a certain level of freedom. You know, I get to decide my schedule to a degree, et cetera, et cetera. And so do you think that, do you think it's binary? Do you think that taking a job necessarily means that you have to fit in, sacrifice your freedom, become who the company wants you to become, obey their rules, show up when they tell you to show up? Like, how do you feel about those kind of aspects? Or do you think there's actually a middle ground where companies are possibly now more fluid, more flexible, more accommodating? Yeah, great question. I think I think there's like one piece that I want to address before I answer that question. And that is like, I think there are smarter ways to do business than how I've been doing it. And I'm mm. not sure, I don't know the ins and outs of your business, but you know, if I'm to, if I'm going to start another business again, which is highly likely because I have this entrepreneurial thread. Um, the next time I do it, it'll be with a team. I'll have business partners and we'll have funding and we'll like, we'll, we'll have a salary from the get go and holiday pay. So I'll essentially be a shareholder of a larger company. Um, and so, you know, within that there's holiday pay and within that, that, you know, yeah. so there's like, and you make decisions differently in those mm. types of structures. And so, um, this, this era of entrepreneurship of it, you know, just being me and the sort of financial, um, the sort of financial structure of my business, because it's so volatile, I can never completely get enough money in the bank account to pay me that wage consistently, to pay me that holiday pay consistently, to pay my KiwiSaver consistently, because it's so up and down. And so, um, yeah, the next iteration, I think, is just about learning from these mistakes and making mm. business more solid and having, um, having sort of a, a better financial structure as well as financial projections and things like that to ensure a lot more consistency and stability. And that's totally possible for both of us. It's just yeah. going to be the next wave when we're ready for it. Um, and I think when it comes to moving into uh, having a job, yeah, my experience has actually been really positive with the roles that I have had. And I think that it is 2023. People are pretty, um, pre companies are pretty flexy these days. There's a lot of work from home, flexible hours. You know, the four-day work week is becoming more and more popular. Um, working from home when you're bleeding, financial well-being. I used to work in financial technology with like old men in, in suits. And I told them, you know, we planned our sprint cycles around my menstrual cycle. I was the only woman on my team and I was telling all the boys, I'm just like, I'm bleeding. That's when I'm bleeding. So I'm not going to that networking event. You know, like people are into it, you know. No way. Yeah. Like it's, it, it's received. Okay. Yeah. And so, um, you know, and I think it's also about having standards when you're applying for jobs and like being mm. really clear again, it's like dating, you know, it's like, this is somewhere that you're going to be spending a lot of time. And so you want to choose a company that has similar values to you. It's, it's a project that you have pride in and that you care about. And there's a company culture that's going to support your well being as well. And there are so many places like that out there. Yeah. Um, and they're becoming more and more popular. So yeah. Mm. I have noticed that because I've been reading a lot of job listings. I'm like, oh my God, it feels like there's so many amazing jobs out there and so much flexi time, hybrid working, this and that, right? I'm like, things feel like they've definitely shifted in the last decade or so. For sure. Um, and yeah. for companies, like they want good people on their team and good yeah. people have standards for themselves and for their lives. And so they're needing yeah. to adapt their company culture to create an environment that's going to be attractive for high performing uh, workers essentially yeah like yourself exactly <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah when I reflect on my business journey like I've been really good at some things like in terms of stability like I've had a set salary that I've been able to pay myself every week so that's just been you know set in stone I had my KiwiSaver sorted so that was a that was done etc um yeah, but like you, I've got that sense of like, oh, I think I'm burnt out. I think I just like to relax and be part of a team and be supported and be held and be contributing and it not be all about me, 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 which it kind of is from the perspective of running a practitioner business. 
Um, and I get the sense of what you're talking about, like, oh, this is just maybe a rest. This is just maybe taking some time out and eventually maybe another business comes forth, but from a different place. The conditioning's different. The focus is different. The lessons have been learned. Um, and one thing I'm taking from your, you know, this is your third business and it sounds like you've learned every single time all the way through. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you just adapt and you refine and you make them more suited to you as you go along. And so, yeah, this this business has been the financial like like sharpening and refining. And yeah, yeah, I guess that's just the beauty of life, right? We grow and adapt and are able to pivot. And actually, I found this amazing quote from the holistic psychologist on Instagram and it was all about quitting and the negative connotations that come around quitting and how uh you know we live in a culture that uh, encourages us to like keep going no matter what but mm. actually um there's so much emotional maturity courage and strength that is cultivated in your ability to quit to recognize when things aren't working and to walk away take time to Take stock and inventory, learn, rest, relax, have fun, grow into something new and then pivot. And so mm. I think that there's a lot to yeah. take away from that. Yeah. Yeah. I really love that. I love that so much, that wisdom. I think what I notice is I really see business as part of soul initiation, as part of the awakening journey. You know, you mentioned earlier that money is kind of the leverage thing that can force us to recognize what's actually not working. That's got nothing to do with the money per se. Um, and I see my business like that is that the business really invites me into deep growth all the time. It shows me where I'm attached. It shows me where I'm in avoidance. It, it shows me where there's conditioning that needs to be attended to, right? It's like, yeah business in the 21st century it's another method for awakening it, it too comes onto the path <laughs> yeah yeah it does and I'm curious if I I'm even curious about that you know it's a lot of heavy lifting yeah a lot of heavy lifting and I think it's all it's kind of like once you've swallowed the blue pill you can't <laughs> vomit it up you know it's like I feel like now that I have that that initiatory I guess just that's just how I operate now it's like yeah, life yeah. is my mirror and so I think that no matter what business I start next if I start another business next who knows um but there's like yeah even if I started a product selling uh mugs you know I'd probably <laughs> still find some like spiritual initiatory like process out of the mug you know like <laughs> Okay, so here's the question on this that I've been asking myself. Am I just addicted to the intensity of like initiation? Is it possible that oh, maybe <laughs> life can just be enjoyed? <laughs> yeah, I think that I think, I mean, I don't know, yeah. but probably I feel that I have that as well. And there's um, sometimes there's an invitation to not initiate <laughs> let's not let's just take the easy road <laughs> yeah it's not even the easy road let's just take a different road that mm. you know because the intensity doesn't necessarily equal better it just equals intensity hmm. yeah it's definitely something I'm sitting with is my potential addiction to intensity and all of its things like yeah <laughs> It doesn't, so like taking the easy road for you actually does not sound easy at all. It sounds like the easy road is the intensity and I wonder what it would look ah. like to choose a road of contentment or contentment. Yes. Contentment's mm. a great word. Yeah. Mate, I was going to say of being small, it's not quite the right thing. Like I know that's, I'm really excited. I'm like, oh, I want to do another 24 hour care time. I did a 24 hour care time last year where you just chant the Hare Krishna chant for like 24 hours. I want to do that again. And then I noticed that I'm like, what is it about those? There's something in me that thrills at the challenge, that thrills at pushing myself, that thrills at what it takes to sit there 
and be with whatever arises whilst chanting the same chant over and over and over again for 24 hours. <laughs> and then the high that comes afterwards, right? From being in that space. I'm like, ah, oh, is that addiction to intensity? Who knows? Possibly. <laughs> Can you? I know you can relate, Laurel. <laughs> I can absolutely relate to that. Totally. I think that's like one example that is amplified in other areas, right? Because it's like how we do one thing is how we do many things. And so yeah. you're really recognizing, yeah, a, a potential pattern that you're noticing. And like, I guess we don't have to try to be who people who we're not you know maybe we are just these like shakti fueled like intense like wahine in the world you know this is just part of our flair this is our life we're initiatory yeah. beings this you is know? the self-expression <laughs> just this just how it is okay like deal with it but um you know yeah I guess there's also like the power with our self-awareness allows us to make different decisions if we want to yeah. and I know for myself my intensity can be potentially um, sabotaging at times. And so mm. that's sort of something that I'm curious about. You know, I know that I've ended relationships, for example, because they weren't the best, shiniest relationship or like they weren't the most, the, the thing, they weren't this, 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 the more, the more-ish. And so, mm. um. I know I have this drive in me and a big part of my business leaving, leaving the business is, you know, it's not the shine, but it's like, I feel like I'm being the best version of myself when I'm operating in my business. And so is there another way to look at that, that through the lens of contentment where it's like, okay, if I'm not public speaking or in a one, one session with a client, you know, can I still be the best version of myself when I'm just sitting at my office desk with my colleagues? at my nine to five you know and so uh -huh. like there's something in in the energy of contentment and actually just relaxing mm. in my life just relaxing into my life how it is instead of constantly needing to change and improve and fix and solve and initiate and work on and uh, and uh, you know just like yeah oh. just relaxing into relationship with life as it is with all of its imperfections it might yeah. not be the best life it just is what it is mm. I would love you and I to just sit right now in the energy of relaxed contentment for a moment I feel like my guts are like falling out of my pelvic floor like I just feel like my whole yoni is opening and everything's just like oh, I'm just tuning into that allowing that to happen as well to let my guts and yoni just open and drop oh, relaxed contentment with what is life and all its imperfections Yeah. Ah, uh, Laura Allen, thank you so much for you. <laughs> just, yeah. just, just for you, as you yeah. are shiny or not shiny, sparkly or not sparkly. <laughs> I feel I feel like I've received a transmission from this call. I feel like I've been schooled in a beautiful way. <sighs> There's a comfort in knowing I, just the way you described your desire to step into employment felt like a really beautiful transmission. Um, and so for anyone else who's watching this and is going through the same journey around entrepreneurship and finances and money, et cetera, you might even want to rewind and watch that piece again, particularly if you have any ideas or beliefs around what it means to have a job. Go back and listen to Laura Allen give that piece again. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Oh, thanks. Yeah, there's so many amazing jobs out there. There's so many. So, mm. yeah, it doesn't have to be a bad thing. It could be amazing. Yeah.
Thank you, Karalia. I'm so grateful for you and you've been such a huge mentor to me over these last couple of years. We've had the most epic one-one <laughs> sessions. Like I just love doing sessions with you. Like I just feel like it's the best time. We just go to the craziest <laughs> places. It's wild. I love, it. I love it. I feel like you, you know, I don't have to do that much because you're so attuned. I'm just like, and you just do and so ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, bless, bless. May this all be for a blessing for all folk through all time. Hmm. Alrighty, peeps, that was Laura Allen. Oh my goodness. I didn't really expect emotion to come up. That was an interesting thing, but it's that's what's just what's real for me right now. Like I'm literally going through the same process that Laura Allen has been going through. And there's still emotion that I need to digest around it. And, you know, as she said, as practitioners, there's so much we do for our communities like these podcasts that cost money that we don't charge for. Um, yeah, so the whole space is really interesting uh, around money on the entrepreneur journey, um, the way that our childhood trauma impacts things. I think that's what really struck me is the way that Laura Allen recognized that her business the underlying energetics were related to childhood trauma and that sense of like, oh, I need to unhook and clean that up. And I was, I'm in exactly the same place. I'm recognizing that my business was actually built on relational dynamics related to childhood trauma. And those relational dynamics were informing the business. And so there is that sense of like, oh, I need to let it die, clean up the relational dynamics so that then there can be a rebirth from a place of purity or, or cleanliness. Um, but I also loved what she said around contentment and, you know, like just not always fixing, healing, resolving things. Although cleaning up the karmic patterns doesn't feel so much like fixing, healing, resolving. It has a different felt sense. Okay. Anything else I want to reflect on from this particular interview conversation? Oh yeah, so there's something that's been coming through for me over the past while is a sense of, you know, those of us in the sort of more alternative marketplace, you could call it, working outside the mainstream, I've just had the sense that it's time to infiltrate, enter, come into the mainstream and bring our magic into it. And maybe that's just because that's what I need to do. Um you know, but so many people leave the corporate world to become a yoga teacher or, or a Reiki master or whatever it is. And I think that's a really important stage in the journey. But I also feel like it's not the end of the journey that what we're doing here is not so much about rejecting the mainstream. And I think Laura Allen held this so beautifully. Like I could really feel her perspective on her experience of working with companies and how companies are. And that you know, we leave, we do what we need to do in order to come into center, come into power, we cultivate our magic, and then we go back, we return to the village, return to the village with the magic. And I do feel like that might be the precipice that I'm on as a practitioner, as I apply for different roles right now. And I wonder, you know, how many other people in the community might be walking that edge, you know, and what I notice, you know, for myself, and we alluded to this in the conversation, that any ideas or beliefs I have around what it means to have a mainstream job or how that might be or what it says about me, it's like, no, I have to digest all of that. It's, it's just what it is. It's just a job. It's just working for people. And it's it's showing up and contributing to society. Um, yeah, there's a whole lot more I could say on that. We're going to leave it at that because we've already been just over an hour thank you so much for listening as always um, please do share like follow radiate the love in whatever way shape or form um, send this to people that you know are maybe having some challenges on the entrepreneur journey and the spiritual marketplace as you could say um, and otherwise I'll see you back here in a couple of weeks so much love to you all so many blessings Thanks for listening to Conversations with Karalia and trust that you enjoyed that nuanced deep dive into spirituality, sexuality, power and awakening. 
If you love my take on the spiritual path and you're looking for more insights like this, then make sure you subscribe and like. You can also check out my website, karaleah.com. That's K-A-R-A-L-E-A-H.com. And subscribe to my weekly newsletter.